Battlefield, battlefield, battlefield. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me thrice, Battlefield 2042. My first real interaction with the Battlefield franchise came about when a little game called Battlefield Bad Company 2 was released. Up to that point, I had never really played a Battlefield game, but the late 2000s to early 2010s was my personal prime gamer time. It was the golden age of Bang Reshi the Gamer. So of course, I had to at least dip my toe into any new AAA shooter release. And boy, am I glad that my toe entered the Bad Company 2 waters. I love this game! Bad Company 2 single player is very solid. The humor is on point. The maps are iconic. The graphics are vibrant and gorgeous. The ever so slightly stylized art style is bold and brilliant. The M416 might be the sexiest in-game gun model of all time. Yeah. And the destruction. Oh lord, Bad Company 2 single-handedly started my love affair with video game destruction. To this day, I think that destruction is the goat of video game mechanics. Destruction was so, so, so well incorporated into BC2's core gameplay. Pretty much every structure could crumble thanks to a well-placed noob tube shot, and every fence shattered under the power of a mighty knife swing. The sheer variety of strategy that destruction provided was just mwah, perfecto. A mere year later, Battlefield 3 was announced, and sheared. The Fortnite kids might not remember, but the dropping of that Battlefield 3 official Faultline trailer was a monumental moment in gaming history. Battlefield 3's graphics felt like a quantum leap in console shooter visual fidelity. Beyond graphical amazement, thanks to Bad Company 2's slightly surprising success, Battlefield now felt like a more mainstream series that had a genuine console player fanbase. As such, the hype war between the upcoming Battlefield 3 and also upcoming Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 was probably the true birth of the Battlefield vs COD Odyssey. Considering my affection for Bad Company 2, I prepared my body for BF3. I was ready to fully convert to the Church of Battlefield. I can remember the day of its release so clearly. It was one of my very good mates' birthdays. Shout out to Aiden. We were gathered around the TV at his house. There was dominoes on the table. Margarita. Aiden loaded up BF3. We began this hotly anticipated games campaign. And then for the rest of that fated evening, we proceeded to take the absolute piss out of Battlefield 3. Real talk, BF3's campaign is so boring, the epitome of generic. I still remember that night me and the boys spent mocking it. A great memory, but also an experience that planted the seed of Battlefield hatred into my subconscious. No matter how much I tried, I just could not get into BF3's multiplayer. There were a bunch of ways in which the game deviated from what I loved about BC2. BF3 de-emphasized destruction. It had less vibrance and style in its graphics. It lacked humor and felt overly why so serious. BF3 was also one of the first 360 games to require a fat download before you could even play it. And that was something that honestly bothered me more than it should have. Couple those changes with that seed of mockery and my general vibes towards the game spiraled into an abyss of negativity. In theory, I always thought that I should have been a Battlefield boy, but every time I tried to play BF3, it felt like all I ever did was run around for 20 minutes or get deleted straight after spawning by some dumbass tank squad. At that time, the mere mention of the word conquest would give me PTSD-esque flashbacks to hours wasted running from flag to flag only to get blasted out of nowhere by some helicopter dickhead. My hatred got so out of control that I became convinced that Battlefield's popularity was a global conspiracy masterminded by the Camper Illuminati created to justify their disgusting anti-fun tactics. When Battlefield 4 launched as an unfinished disaster, I only felt more vindicated in my anti-Battlefield mentality. Fast forward to 2016, 
in the ongoing Battlefield vs Call of Duty war. For the first time in a long time, it felt like Battlefield had really taken a definitive lead. The announcement of Infinite Warfare felt like a negative tipping point for COD, while Battlefield 1's announcement garnered hype that dwarfed anything that a Battlefield had received before. By taking Battlefield 1 all the way back to World War 1, DICE actually gave their franchise a genuinely unique selling point in the AAA space. As much as I like to think of myself as an intellectual gamer, at heart I'm just a filthy casual, right? I love me a good old fashioned hype train, so you can bet your ass I boarded the BF1 bandwagon. First class tickets and complimentary champagne, baby! And boy, am I glad I did. Battlefield 1 is such an intense and visceral war-like online shooter. BF1's incredible presentation gripped me. It gripped me so hard that I overcame my Battlefield hesitations, my Camper Illuminati paranoia. I finally let myself just play the game. And most importantly, when I was running through the trenches as a frontline medic, syringing my homies back to life, I finally understood the Battlefield formula. BF1 isn't perfect, but it's one of very few AAA games in recent memory that actually lived up to the hype. With my newfound understanding of the Battlefield way, I went back and played BF4, and I gotta say I kinda understand people who say that this is the last true Battlefield. Stylistically, Battlefield just suits the modern era more. BF4 wasn't exactly popping by the time I dipped back into it, so I waited for my next chance to become a Battlefield convert. BF5 happened, and then finally, like a call from the only in Battlefield Heavens, Battlefield 2042 was announced. I was ready. And so, here we are. The present day. Battlefield 2042 fucking sucks. Is Battlefield 2042 unfinished? Yes, 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 yes. Rubber banding, connection issues, visual glitches, reviving just being straight up broken, I've had it all. My game has crashed multiple times while loading breakthrough. No, not just long loading screens, full on crashes. Hit registration doesn't work, kills sometimes glitch out and don't ping on your HUD. The game has a general layer of jank in the animations and in the way it looks. Apparently, the dog shit gunplay is actually a bug in the bloom mechanics. Battlefield 2042 is so broken that I cannot tell where the glitch ends and the game begins. Seriously, this game is just unplayable way too often. My experience with BF2042 is just as bad as my experience was with Cyber Scam 2077. Alongside bugs and glitches, the game is just missing a lot of features. On console, there's no scoreboard, there is no server browser, there is no stat tracker, there are hardly any maps, there are hardly any guns, there are hardly any game modes, there are no persistent lobbies, there are entire lists on reddit that detail just how much is missing from this game compared to other battlefields. Trust me, there's a lot more stuff missing. I don't even care that it doesn't have a campaign. BF campaigns have pretty much all sucked since Bad Company 2. But don't worry guys, no matter what you're doing in BF 2042, you can always access the store. Fundamentally, is this game in any state to be sold for 60 to 110 pounds? No, 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 no. The funny thing about BF2042 is that I believe its broken nature hides from its shoddy game design miscues. So let's talk about that. Firstly, why don't we take a look at the all new Hazard Zone game mode. This game mode will be dead in the next 3 to 4 months, tops. For a battle royale-esque mode, if it ain't free to play, in a coffin it will lay. Now let's dive into BF2042's core, All Out Warfare. Core BF2042 unfortunately has a severe case of Halo 4 syndrome. While every online shooter can be boiled down to players running around and shooting people, every good online shooter has its own rhythm. I'd say that these rhythms are dictated by map design and a game's fundamental gameplay loop. Halo, of course, had its own established rhythm that fans came to know and love. In their eternal wisdom, 343 decided that Halo 4 needed to recapture the casuals. So, 
They made power weapon spawns completely random and gave players the ability to call in killstreak-esque ordnance drops. This made map design essentially irrelevant. Every map now played equally as randomly. Boom, one half of the rhythm broken. On the game loop side, 343 kept the loadouts from reach but also added support Bruh. upgrades, tactical Bruh. packages and specializations, Bruh. presumably to give Halo that COD creator class swagger. All these customization options didn't really do anything except dilute the pre-established Halo loops. Most egregiously, 343 just had to force sprint into Halo, so now every player could sprint just like COD. Unfortunately, sprint was so fast in this game that if you were losing a gunfight, you could almost always just do the old Joseph Joestar and Run for your life! No! Halo 4's multiplayer is bloated and has too many half-baked semi-mechanics. It just evolves into something really meaningless and blah. It's got no rhythm to latch onto. When a game changes rhythm, you might have an external and emotional reaction. Halo 2 is more fast paced, while Halo 3 is more slow paced. But when a game has no rhythm, like Halo 4, you'll just stop playing it. And that's what everyone did. I struggled to get into Battlefield for the longest time, because I didn't understand its rhythm. I couldn't grasp onto the Battlefield formula. The BF sandbox is so expansive that I felt lost. The line between chaotic warfare and meaninglessness blurred. It was only when I started immersing myself in each of the classes. It was only when I started working with my squad instead of being a run and gun lone wolf that I started to get Battlefield. Good soldiers follow orders and have more fun. The squad and class system provides the player with structure and rhythm and thus makes the Battlefield sandbox more navigable. Of course, once you become a level 900 BF fan, you can pull off more complex only in Battlefield moments and other Battlefield shenanigans, but the class and squad system is the base, the foundation on which the BF formula is built on. They are the elements that give combat meaning. I think the reason why I got Bad Company 2 was because it was more condensed and had smart design elements that subconsciously pushed you into being a team player. Battlefield 2042 got rid of classes and heavily de-emphasized squads, and they replaced them with specialists, aka cosmetic industry trend motherfuckers. I'm not against Rule 34 bait, yeah. but just like Halo 4 specializations, these specialists are caught in the no man's land where their abilities aren't sick enough to make them interesting, but are intrusive enough to still be there I guess. The dumb part is that they could have easily just made specialists that adhered to the pre-existing battlefield classes, kinda like every other actual hero shooter. I know DICE slapped on the class labels last minute, but come on now. 2042's maps also break the BF rhythm. They are just so, so, so big. Like I've been saying for years, bigger isn't always better. So much time is spent just running around. Most of the time, you're just having shootouts across big open expanses because there's so few objects interspersed within these massive landscapes. Destruction is pretty much non-existent and no one cares about the tornadoes. It's all so bleh also shapeless. DICE also have given the player the ability to drop in vehicles anywhere on the map. Ordnance drops anyone? And now feels like there are just always way too many vehicles during a match. The vehicles, even more so than in previous BFs, just seem to spank the infantry into submission. In one fell swoop, DICE have both taken away Battlefield's unique flavor but have also exacerbated the issues I personally already had with Battlefields in the past, aka non-stop running and vehicle bullshittery. I swear down, those goddamn hovercrafts are permanently located in the region of my body known as the pain in my ass. The attachment system sums up BF2042's design flaws. Yes, it is sexy to switch attachments on the fly, but like, isn't the point of attachments to specifically choose how you want to play, pros and cons included? If you have to allow players to switch attachments on the fly because of the size of your maps, doesn't that mean your maps are too big? Is All Out Warfare as apocalyptically bad as my analysis might convey? No. You can still run around and shoot people, 
but as someone who will openly admit that they have oscillated in their love for Battlefield, I personally believe DICE's game design decisions are a damn shame. The game's combat just feels so much more meaningless, it lacks that rhythm. This might sound stupid, but core BF2042 just feels like a bunch of players aimlessly running around and shooting each other. I definitely had the most fun with Portal, but it just does not have enough content to save Battlefield 2042. It's that simple. The fact that enemies look the exact same as your own teammates just sums 2042 up. The fact that it's hard to tell who to actually shoot in a game about shooting people is just Battlefield 2042 in a nutshell. This is such a basic design flaw that has never been an issue in online games since Pong. Why didn't DICE just give each faction separate costumes or even just a palette swap? It's baffling. It's just such a basic thing to get wrong. Battlefield 2042 truly is an example of gaming evolving backwards. Could the BF2042 package evolve into something great over time? Sure, but BF2042 eventually becoming something amazing is definitely not a given. Stylistically, Battlefield will never be the casual king because it doesn't provide instant gratification the way that Halo and COD do. That's not a bad thing. Battlefield should be proud of being Battlefield. Battlefield has a diehard community that keep each game alive for years and who stick with each game despite the repeated unfinished and janky launches. Instead of diluting Battlefield to appeal to the masses, EA and DICE should work on making it easier for people to become a part of the Battlefield community. I'll openly admit that I'm not historically the biggest Battlefield fan, and if that makes you think my opinion is invalid, so be it. At the end of the day though, it's just crazy to me how at one point BF2042 seemed to be the surefire victor of the great FPS war of 2021, but as it stands, it's probably all the way down in last place. Son of a bitch!